you see, you've got the DNA, which is like a ladder, but whereas your normal ladder is a couple of metres long and has 12 rungs, this ladder is a couple of metres long, but it's got 3 billion rungs. And we've sort of had these blunderbuss tools where we can sort of look at this and that and modify things a bit, but it's really crude. And they've come up with a thing called Talons, T-A-L-E-N-S, which is transcription activator-like effect nucleases. But what it means is that we can go here and there and there. And we can look at tiny bits of the DNA, which we've never been able to do, and already they've made purely as a research tool, a miniature pig for studying certain types of heart diseases and there was no other way to do it other than having this miniature pig with the technology that we have in place today and so we can treat people in the near future and then we won't need to make the miniature pigs anymore. So basically we've got a new tool for, for looking at and modifying tiny bits of the DNA which we didn't have a year ago. Now someone who also has had some interesting developments to offer to science this year was Mr Majorana Fermions yes. and it was to do with the first solid evidence that particles act as their own antimatter. Yeah so Mr Ettore Majorana and I hope I don't get his <laughs> name wrongly uh, about 70 years ago he was fooling around in this relatively new field called quantum mechanics. I'd like to point out we call it mechanics not physics, because we don't understand it. Even today, in 2012, 2013, we don't understand it. So he was fooling around in quantum mechanics, and he was trying to link fermions, which are a particle that have a spin, like an electron, with relativity. Oh my God, what sort of brain is that? Anyway, he was able to do it. And then he said, well, if my theory is correct, uh, therefore we should have, and I'll name it after me, what well, he probably didn't, Majorana fermions. Yeah, okay, what are they? They're a particle, that are uh, their own antiparticle at the same time. So if you think about an atom, you might remember from high school, it's got you know, the positive core and the negative electrons. Well, if you just make the positive core negative and you make the electrons positive, that's an anti-atom. So he worked out that there were these particles that could be their own antiparticle at the same time. Oh my God, that's hurting my head. And then if you got one of these, and then it would obliterate itself. Okay, that's hurting my head. And then just recently, some scientists said, okay, well, let's get some nanoscale, that's really tiny wires, and run electrons through it, and then run them through next to a superconductor, and blow me down, we've got a quantum computer. Which basically means something in the future, all of the computers on Earth, the power of that is something smaller than a grain of sand something you can bury in your body. And so because this guy was playing around with fermions and relativity nearly three quarters of a century ago, we might have quantum computers small enough to bury in our brains in the future, maybe. It sounds incredible. Now, another thing that's been quite incredible, of course, has been the ENCODE project, which has been discovering that about as much as 80% of the human genome is more functional than previously thought. Yeah, so firstly we didn't know about DNA, and then we discovered, okay, there's this DNA, this sort of twin spiral, and then we did the, let's map the DNA, and, uh, oh, look at that, 98% of it is junk. Right, what? Uh, only 2% of it does stuff. Obviously it's not junk, it's not like it's there for a mistake. So we went looking and that's what ENCODE did. ENCODE looked at this 98% and they found that about 80% of it actually makes RNA, which doesn't make proteins, but the RNA then goes to different cells all around the body, skin, muscle, liver, and does stuff that we have no idea of. Whoa. And then they went one step further. They found that bits of it could turn genes on and off, which we didn't know before. And then finally, they found 8% of the DNA that is fixed, relatively fixed from the giant people in one, giant white skinned people to tiny uh, short black dwarves in the Kalahari Desert. Or not, they're not dwarves, they're the Bushmen, you know, but we're all the same. And they found that the, they found the 8% of the DNA that is the same. And they're saying that's the bit that makes us us that is fixed in, in human. And, and so, basically another major step in searching along the DNA ladder of life. Understanding who we are and how we and work. How, and how we work, yeah, <laughs> and, and basically how we're the same. Yes. We're all the same, we're all human. Fantastic stuff. Well, another thing about understanding how we work and how we can potentially work has been looking at the brain-machine interfaces, so how we might be able to interact and work with computers and machines. Ah, well, for that I go back to the ultimate science reference, the Star, Trek, Star Wars movies, and Luke Skywalker has his arm chopped off. 
And then he opens up the little panel and he sort of plays with things, makes his fingers work. And then the robot surgeon pricks his finger and he feels it. So it's two-way. He can do motor and he can sense. The best we've been able to do is that we can get implants in the brain and then after a lot of work manage to get them to control an arm or a leg in people who have lost an arm or both arms and both or or both legs or all four limbs and we've managed to move slowly along that pathway and then just now and this is an article in the uh, January 2013 Scientific American we've worked out a way to make a living bridge where we can marry electronic devices, with it, which you've got silicon, with the nerve cells in your body. It's a great article, read it. And so now we're heading down that pathway where we'll be able to marry, for example, a tiny computer the size of a grain of sand to your nerves. So if you want to think, what's the bus timetable? Bingo, it just appears in your field of view. We're heading down that pathway. Now, something else that's made it on the highlights for uh, Science 2012 was this thing called neutrino mixing angle, which uh, I need you to explain, Dr. Carl. What are we going on with here? Okay, so... Neutrinos are these particles that flood through you. Now, you know how light can be stopped by a sheet of paper and radiation can be stopped by a little bit of concrete or lead or maybe half a metre of lead. Well, neutrinos, to stop neutrinos, you don't need a lead being half a metre. You need a couple of thousand light years of lead to have a 50-50 chance of stopping a neutrino. They flood through you and the universe is transparent to them. And yet they're everywhere. Trillions of them are flooding through your body, through your thumbnail every second. And we don't, it's very hard to pick them up. And we're getting closer to understanding these things that are such a huge part of the universe that we don't even sense. them. And one day they'll be part of your smartphone or God knows, or something you'll tell, Johnny, stop playing with your neutrinos and come in and do your homework, you know, something like that in the future. (laughs) Can't wait, Dr. Carl. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Miriam.